What is going on everybody? It's me Jeremy and welcome to RuneScape Classic Beginner's Guide. I've been wanting to do this for a long time so to start off the first misconception people have is finding it. All you have to do is go to Google, type in RuneScape Classic. Um, it's somewhere hidden on the RS3 site but it's very hard to find so it's much easier just to do that. It also says you have to have previously played Classic right here. That's not the case. You just have to have RuneScape membership. It can even be a brand new account with membership on it. And then you can just load up a world and start a new account and all that. So the second misconception I see a lot is people think just if they play RS Classic that it's so dead that they have to play Iron Man style. That's not the case. Uh, there's forums at the very bottom of the uh, same place you go to for RS3 forums and old school forums. It's just at the very bottom. There's a marketplace and then there's a discussion. And you go in here and let's say you needed a rune full helm. You could buy it in here now. It would probably take two to three days up to like two to three days for someone to finally respond to you. But you can get items like that and you can sell like herb law supplies and stuff like that. It just takes a while because the game is relatively dead. But you do not have to play Iron Man style just right off the bat. You can tell these are very inactive though because I'm only on the second page and it's already pulling up stuff from like February of this year. So it's it's very inactive but people do look actually look at this like the veterans and other people that play. So most of the stuff you're seeing in the background um, it's, it's just there. It has nothing to do with what I'm saying just something uh, for you guys to watch doing random crap so when you first start RS Classic you're gonna have three problems the first one is obviously GP the second one is gonna be gear which you cannot get without GP and the third being food which you also cannot get without GP or without spending a lot of time you know manually fishing it yourself this is actually a case where what's on the screen actually does apply this is the shop in Brimhaven. You can see it sells swordfish, lobster, tuna, cod, and herring. Uh, all pretty decent food, especially the herring and cod for low levels. Still pretty decent food, but of course you need GP. There's also a shop in Gnome Stronghold. It sells gnome food. There's something in there. A few things in there. The chocolate bomb and the tangled toad's legs heal up to 15. It does have like a two second delay like before it applies the healing though, so try not to use them anywhere too dangerous. So the first thing I would advise you to do when you get off Tutorial Island and up here in Lumbridge is pickpocket the uh, few men that are around. Now on Classic when you pickpocket, they catch you, you actually get into combat with them, so let them hit you three times, get out of combat, click away, and go back to pickpocketing. Do this until level five thieving. Even if you die, I mean you spawn right nearby in Lumbridge, and can just pick back up your shit and keep pickpocketing. So just do level five. Level five is cakes. Um, you'll need cakes early game for training, pickpocketing, pretty much everything. So I would advise going to Artie through Brimhaven so you don't have to go through the Ice Mountain. And you know, die. Don't, don't even try crossing Ice Mountain until you get 30 defense, probably 20 defense maybe with Mithril and some good food. So once you get those cakes that I was talking about, you can go and train at Chickens. That's the best place. And if you are in already already, there's chickens outside of, I believe, like uh, Heminster, the fishing contest area. And if you can't find those, there's cows in already as well that are pretty good. Chickens are great, though, because they drop the feathers, which you will eventually use for fly fishing, which is great. You'll need those eventually. But once you train on chickens, cows, whatever the case may be, low level monster, um, and you have a good amount of cakes, you can go to either the lava maze, which I'm showing up on the screen, or you can go, I would recommend before this, the steel plate leg spawn north of the graveyard of shadows. The only things you have to tank there are level 30 deadly red spiders, and you can trap them outside. But the lava maze, the earth staff, is relatively safe you just have to go through giants and black knights if you're a low level i would say below 30 defense and don't have decent food like trout or above do not even try and go for the steel plate body because it's guarded by two level 79 lesser demons and you will die 
So if you happen to be 30 plus defense or were cheeky and somehow got your hands on the steel plates early without dying, you can sell them to Horvick, the uh, armor smith. It's right east of the Zaff, little symbol right there, Zaff Staffs, uh, which is east of the West Bank right there. You can sell them for up to 1,200 gold each if you sell them to Horvick. If you looted the Earth Staffs, which are a lot safer to loot, you can sell them for 800 plus GP each to Zaff Staffs right east of the bank. If you found the steel plate legs north of the Graveyard of Shadows, I believe that's what that graveyard's called. They have like three different ones, but it's the uh, Deadly Red Spider steel plate leg spawn slash gold ore. Go for the steel plate legs. If you did do that, you can sell them to Louis Legs and Al Carid for over 600 gold each. I would advise when it drops down to like the mid 500s because you've added a lot of stock into it, I would advise world hopping so you can get that maximum gold per envy. And to add on to this, if you're a starter player just scraping by to get money, you should have gotten steel legs. It's just a lot safer. You don't have to tank level 46 black knights, level 37 hill giants, and king scorpions, which are like level 32, and all everything's aggressive. So if you got the steel legs, you should have a decent amount of coins. Uh, there's a sword shop actually right south of Zaff Staffs. If you need a starter weapon, they sell swords and long swords up to adamant, I believe. So it carries everything up to adamant. Now, since you're not going to be fighting dragons though, the two-hand sword is kind of king because there's no weapon speed and it has the highest power out of any weapon on this game. Until you get to dragon weapons, then of course, you know, it's either the dragon long for more accuracy or the DBA for more power, but that's besides the point right now. There is a two-handed shop in Taverly. It's uh, an NPC named Gaius. Sells two hands up to adamant for 6,400 gold for the adamant. And of course it decreases from there. Mithril is going to be less than that. Etc, etc. So all that's playing in the background is me selling the steel legs that I've been blabbering on about for a while. Selling them to him. Got about half an envy before it went down to 550 GP each. Just from that I got 7k coins. Which is very good money early. So now that we've talked about where to purchase weapons, I'm going to talk a little bit about armor. Of course, since I have this up for up to adamant plate legs, you can go to Louis Legs. Um, for your plate bodies, Horvick, the armor, and Varrock sells up to a mithril plate body. Now, for an adamant plate body, you will need 32 quest points to get into the Champion's Guild to buy the adamant plate. To add on to that, the Champions Guild also sells the Rune Legs and Rune Chain, which is very cool. If you need a full helmet, they sell full helmets up to Adamant at Barbarian Village. Uh, shields you can't really get anywhere. You can get up to like Iron at the Valley Shield Shop, which is abysmal. And then just as a bonus, you can go to Wayne's Chains on the back wall, Falador and get chain bodies up to adamant. There's no point in getting a chain body early game because the one benefit to using a chain body is you can use gloves with it and early game the only gloves you have are leather gloves until you do underground pass which is mid to late game and uh, family crest which is mid to late game as well so the only gloves you have are leather and they're, they're just trash so just stick with the plate body until you unlock clanks or you know, cooking gauntlets or whichever ones you decide to choose from Family Crest. So now that I've covered melee weapons and melee armor, I'm going to kind of get into ranged. For ranged armor, there is no ranged armor on Classic. You wield the bow with the rune armor or whatever set of armor you have. Um, as far as bows go, stick with the longbow. It's just better. Um, you can buy up to an oak longbow from the Varrock shop. It's not like an old school where you can buy up to maple or whatever the case is. It's not like that. You can only buy up to oak. It sucks, but that's how it is. This same shop also sells, you know, a plethora of arrows, bronze, iron, steel, mithril. Stick with the bronze or iron arrows. They're cheaper for training. Uh, the reason range is kind of just crap on here is because you have to have an obstacle in between you and the opponent not just to mitigate damage, you literally can't let them touch you or else you start punching and meleeing. You get no range XP. You basically have to do what I'm doing right here and just lure them 
like over an obstacle and do that right here. It's very, very dumb. It, it's honestly the weakest out of the three combat styles on Classic. So if you want any bow um, above Oak, you will either have to go to the RSC forums that I mentioned earlier and try and get a high level player to sell you one. They will probably only respond like for the right price. So you'll have to overprice it if you really want it. Um, you can also fletch it, which is very slow to get, but still doable. If you get lucky enough, you can unlock a maple longbow. I think you need like 40 or 45 range to use that. And you have to get the right constellation like or sign on the observatory quest. I'm not sure if there's a way to cheese it or you know get the constellation you want. I think it's kind of random, but if you happen to get uh, a specific one, I forget which one it is, you will get a maple longbow. And as far as crossbows go, just try and avoid them. They're relatively useless. They're weaker than bow. They're just not that great. So now that we've pretty much covered range, um, we will get into magic. So for magic, it's pretty safe to just stick with a elemental staff from Zaf's staff shop. I personally like the fire one because I use fire strike a lot when I run out of runes just to train up magic. Because on here, the spells actually give you more like XP than they would on old school because runes are harder to come by. There's no rune crafting on this game, of course, so the magic XP ratios are better than they are on old school. So therefore a elemental like staff or you know whatever is is great for use. Like if you're using fire strike, it primarily uses more fire runes than it does air, so stick with the fire staff. If you're using air spells, air staff, etc. etc. You get the point. So as far as mage armor goes, pretty much the only early game mage armor in the game is the blue wizard hat and blue wizard top. You don't have pants. You can find a blue skirt, I think, and a pink skirt, like, but they don't give any mage bonus, so you're pretty much running around without pants on. Uh, the only robe bottom that gives magic bonus is a Zamorak robe bottom, and you usually don't find one of those till later. You can probably pick up one on the forums, but other than that, they're pretty pretty hard to come by. There are a few low le lower level things that drop up. One of the ones that sticks out to me is the Zami Disciples at the end of Underground Pass, which you shouldn't be really doing early game. So just don't worry about it. There's also dark wizard robes of the same same type on there. It has the hat and the top, and they're actually worse than the blue ones because you know they're evil robes, so they have to be worse. They have uh, less uh, magic bonus than the blue robes, so try and avoid those. But if it's all you can get, it's, it's fine. And just to add on, because I don't think I said it earlier, a... Like rune armor doesn't negatively affect range and rune armor does not negatively affect magic. This goes for any set of armor in the game. It doesn't give you negative magic bonus. Iron, steel, mithril, black armor doesn't negatively affect range or magic. One more thing about magic would be the runes. Now, the only rune shops in the entire game are the Mage Arena in the Wilderness. The actual rune shop itself is not in the wilderness, but getting there requires you to traverse through the wilderness. Uh, there's also Port Sirem rune shop and Varrock rune shop. There is also a rune shop in the Magic Guild, however that requires at least 63 magic to get into with a wizard mind bomb or 66 magic with no boosts. However, the thing about these shops is they only sell the elemental runes and mind runes. The mage guild shop actually sells soul runes, but don't concern yourself with that because the minimum spell to use a soul rune is 66. And on this game, the shop sells the soul runes for 2,500 gold each, which is really expensive. And of course the other runes for the right price, you know, you can find on the forums. Uh, if you want to get mind runes or elemental runes, try and avoid Port Sirem because there's almost always a bot there. There can be bots in Barak too, uh, but they just seem to hang around Port Sirem more often. They hardly do hang around this mage arena rune shop though, so I mean, there's that. And if you are buying runes off the forums, keep in mind that things like blood runes and death runes hold usually a high street value. I believe they hold a street value of around a thousand gold each. This could have fluctuated due to the dying 
you know, player base, but as far as I know, they've always stayed around a thousand gold per one room, which is pretty hefty price. So that's about it for me. As far as this video goes, I taught you how to basically get some starter gold, told you where the basic gear is, the basic weapons are for each style, told you a few tips here and there. This isn't a training guide, so I'm not telling you like, oh, from 1 to 40 you do this, blah, 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 blah. It's just beginner tips, beginner, like how to start making money because of the low player base on here and stuff like that. So I hope you found it interesting in place of a classic episode. I am currently not in town right now. I'm in Colorado, so I couldn't really grind out the last, you know, two or three skills required for Legends. And I got a few, you know, requests for a starter guide on this dead game, so I figured I would just uh, share it with you, share a little bit of information that I know. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week with another episode in my RuneScape Classic series. Bye.